June is National Men's Health Month, and face it, a big problem for many men is they just refuse. They don't want to go to the doctor, thinking is that uh, if, if I don't know about it, it, it ain't going to happen to me. Well, wrong. Don't mean to be cliche here, but better safe than sorry. So this month, we'll take a look at a variety of men's health issues, and today, the focus is on prostate cancer. It is the most common non-skin cancer in the U.S., and it is pretty prevalent, affecting one in every six or seven men. Joining me on the morning show, Dr. Ali Kazrayan, a fellowship-trained urologist with Kazrayan Urology here in Jacksonville. Good morning. Morning. So there had been uh, an advisory that came out, maybe we shouldn't have as active surveillance. But then something happened. Yeah, so if you look, 2008, 2012, uh, there was a recommendation against uh, prostate cancer screening and and what we found you know not surprisingly screening numbers went down and studies have come out showing that the rates of metastatic prostate cancer which is a really the reason why we screen you know prostate cancer confined to your prostate isn't what we worry about we treat it to avoid metastatic prostate cancer which unfortunately is something that could potentially become really debilitating to your quality of life but also could impact the quantity of your life it could be fatal um, so that opens the the conversation again of the importance of talking to your doctor about screening for prostate cancer, which involves a, a simple lab test called the PSA test and also a rectal exam. Yeah, and there are rarely, if any, early warning signs. But there are some signs that do pop up occasionally that let you know, uh-oh, Maybe I should get this checked out. You know, the, the, the things to think about, most men are going to have difficulties with urination. Uh, to, to be mindful, those are usually related to difficulties with urination due to BPH, a benign enlargement of the prostate. However, take it as an opportunity, whether it's you or whether it's someone you love experiencing those things, go talk to your doctor. Getting a PSA is a simple test that can, that can highlight something that at its very, very beginning stages, where prostate cancer confined to the prostate is very, very treatable and now we have a lot of, lot of very, very effective ways of treating it that are, are uh, preserving of quality of life, but also very curative, approaching 95 to 100% cures. And one of those treatments is actually active surveillance. Active surveillance. Not all prostate cancer that's diagnosed needs to be treated. About 40 to 50% of the prostate cancers we diagnose are very low volume, very low risk, and you can monitor it with frequent PSA checks, rectal exams, and repeat biopsies. So we, we monitor the progression of the disease, which is very slow in those cases. And it's not a fatal disease, so you can treat it more of a chronic disease. So the impact on the quality of your life is minimal, but we avoid missing those cancers that could change and cause you to pass away from the disease. So it used to be you could do a prostatectomy where you remove the prostate, but now you don't have to necessarily remove the entire prostate. No, we have so many different options when you actually get diagnosed with prostate cancer, even things like focal therapy. Now we do smarter biopsy uh, uh, pathways, which include MRI scans, uh, that if we find a targetable lesion, we could do a few fusion biopsy is called, where we take the MRI and the ultrasound, merge the images together and target that area. If that's the only area that you have cancer, we could do focal therapy where we just treat the portion of the prostate that has the cancer, leave the unaffected tissue alone. So the more prostate you preserve, the more function you preserve. So thereby you take care of the cancer, but you also take care of the quality of life issues that most people use as potentially an excuse in their mind to avoid screening in the first place. And they recently did a clinical study and they found a fairly good good option for treating it and it's got a pretty good outcome over five years. So if you look, there are a number of different options to think about. One, uh, you have active surveillance. Two, the prostatectomy is, is, is better in terms of the preservation of quality of life with a robotic technology. Uh, the focal therapy options, we have high intensity focused ultrasound. Uh, there are a number of different options that are, that are focally op available that are, are good, good options in terms of the balance of cure and the side effect profile. And then radiation therapy options are now more precise. The, the study you're alluding to even talked about if men who undergo uh, prostatectomy and have recurrences now can get a very, very focal uh, radiation therapy to not only the bed of where the prostate was, was removed, but also include the radiation bed uh, to include the pelvis and, and, and uh, again, hormone blockade therapies. And those men got up to 90% cure rates up to five years. So it's this idea of looking at the totality of care of the prostate cancer from the beginning to the end of disease. Um, when we talk about that, even advanced prostate cancer that's gone beyond the prostate, now we look at, uh, it's not just the idea of we give a medicine uh, of blocking testosterone levels, we can target lesions, we have better imaging studies that look for targetable lesions, so, and we have better medications that are even pills that we can take. So the whole pathway has changed to be more precise, more accurate, more targeted, but it all starts with screening, so we don't even have to get to those conversations. So the bottom 
line is catch it early, better clinical outcomes. And when you think about prostate cancer, it's not the outcome that it used to be. So guys, go to the doctor.